in the last video in this series, we installed the 882SAOJP serial board into the Altair 8800 computer and developed a basic program that we subsequently executed on the computer. If you recall from the previous video, the EEPROM installed on the serial board housed the basic interpreter, enabling us to write and execute basic programs on the computer. However, this approach limits us to using only basic, preventing functions like saving our program to disk or running different programs, unless we replace the EEPROM on the serial board each time. Now that we've established the Altair's capability to execute basic programs, our goal in this video is to run an operating system on the Altair. This will enable us to execute a variety of programs and also allow us to save our work to disk. Let's get started. First, we'll connect a terminal to port 1 of the serial board and port 2 will be connected to an external computer which will serve as a data source as we'll demonstrate later. For this connection, we're using a serial to USB adapter. We'll also replace the EEPROM on the serial board with AMON, an Altair monitor, to utilize its uh, copy functionality. Additionally, make sure to set the correct headers and switches on the serial board for capability with AMON. I've set port 2 to 19200 baud for faster transfers. With the serial cables connected and Amon loaded, let's go ahead and power on the Altair. On our terminal, we can see the Amon prompt. Type in HL and press enter. This command will load Intel hex into memory from port 2 which is currently connected to our external computer. This process enables us to load a bootloader into the Altair's RAM, allowing us to boot the computer from disk. Now, in the serial console of the external computer, ensure that our baud rate matches the 19200 baud of the serial board's port 2. We'll then transmit our bootloader file over serial. The bootloader, uh, though it's in Intel hex format, is, is essentially a series of hex bytes that we need to transfer to the Altair via serial. When the HL command processes the last record, it will display the total number of records copied on the terminal screen. Now we're ready to run the bootloader. First, stop the Altair, then examine address 0, which is where the bootloader has been copied to, and finally, toggle Run to execute the bootloader. Before we toggle Run though, we need to supply port 2 with the disk data that the bootloader will attempt to load. Historically, the Altair used disk drives, like the Shugart floppy disk drive, and transfer data via an FTC board or a floppy disk controller board. However, since we like both a physical drive and an FTC board, we will utilize a virtual drive instead. Mike Douglas, from whom I purchased the Altair case and the front panel, also developed an excellent disk drive server that runs on Windows. At the top of this program, we can uh, select the COM port. In our case, the serial cable is connected to COM port 5. And then set the baud rate to 19,200. Then, simulating a regular floppy drive, we will quote, load a disk into the first disk slot, uh, allowing the Altair to read from it on demand. The disk will load is CPM version 2.2, link in the description. Note that CPM requires 64K of RAM, so ensure that your computer has enough working RAM before continuing. With the disk loaded, we can toggle Run and let the Altair boot from the disk. Perfect! 
we have not successfully loaded CPM into the Altair. CPM is an early operating system originally designed for Intel's 4000 and 8000 series microprocessors. With CPM loaded, we can use its commands to run uh, programs from this same disk or any other available disk that we have loaded. For instance, let's run the dir command or the dir command to view the contents of drive A. Next, let's run type demo.asm to display the contents of the file named demo.asm. As you've just seen, it's now possible to run programs from a disk and also save to disk using this operating system. You might think that this method of loading an operating system into the Altair seems cumbersome. And you wouldn't be wrong, indeed it is. One way to streamline this process is by installing an EEPROM with the bootloader loaded on it into the serial board. Additionally, I will demonstrate another approach that provides greater flexibility in handling disks and also enhances disk access performance. What I have here is the FDC Plus board designed by Mike Douglas, remember him? It's based on the original MITS FDC board but with added functionality. This board enables us to load data from an actual disk drive. Uh, it supports a variety of different models, as well as over serial. Additionally, it comes equipped with 64K of RAM, and if I'm not mistaken, 8K of ROM. This means that we can run the bootloader directly from the ROM, similar to how we did with the serial board. I'll include a link in the description for those interested in acquiring one of these boards. Before installing this board into the Altair, we need to configure it. The first set of switches is for selecting the drive type. Since we're using a virtual serial drive instead of a real drive, we'll set this switch to 111. The second switch specifies the amount of RAM to be enabled on this board. To enable RAM, toggle the RAM enable switch down and then set the remaining switches to the down position to start RAM at, at address 0. The third switch is for ROM configuration. Enable ROM by toggling the enable switch up, it's a little different from the RAM enable switch, and set the remaining switches up as well. This setup will enable ROM at address FF00, which is where our bootloader resides on the EEPROM. The remaining switches and jumpers should be left in the off position and unset. Let's proceed to install the board into the computer. We also need to make some adjustments to the serial board as we're no longer using its EEPROM. Set the first switch to FF00. If you recall, this is the uh, address of the bootloader on the ROM. And then uh, enable JS, jumpstart. This will direct the computer to boot from the bootloader loaded on the FTC Plus ROM. The SIN switches and the port address can remain unchanged. The fourth switch should also stay as it is, but we'll close the EEPROM out of disable feature by toggling the ED switch. The baud rate switches can be left in their current positions. Let's reinstall the serial board into the Altair. I'll also run a serial cable from the FTC Plus board to the reader of the case where we will connect the cable for the serial drive server. The terminal will continue to be connected to port 1 of the serial board. Note that if there are any other RAM boards installed, make sure to disable or remove them from the computer to avoid conflicts. One last step. In the serial drive server, let's select the default baud rate of 403.2k, which can be reconfigured in the FDC Plus board. And load CPM version 3 for FDC Plus into the first drive slot. Let's go ahead and power on the machine and toggle run. 
This will load the CPM operating system as before, but this time the process is much more streamlined and cleaner, uh, not to mention faster. We can also load another disk into the second slot, and by typing in the drive letter in the terminal, switch to drive B. Now we can run programs as before, but this time from drive B. Let's try running some programs and see how it behaves. Hope you've enjoyed this video of the Altair running an operating system. If you like this type of content, please hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to see more of it. I'll see you in the next video.